afternoon, all Telehealth members. And I want to wish everybody a happy but rainy Christopher Columbus Day. Today is a nice, cold, rainy day. But I'm going to give you 10 facts about Christopher Columbus that you probably did not know. So let's begin. It says here, the first fact is, Columbus did not set out to prove that the Earth was round. There was no need for Columbus to debunk the flat earthers. The ancient Greeks had already done that as early as the 6th century BC. But in 1492, most educated people knew that the, flat, the planet was not shaped like a pancake. It was only the people that were uneducated that thought that the world was flat. So, as many of you should know, that um, his crew was a bunch of prisoners. Just in case if the world was flat, they would fall off the orb and nobody would really care because they were a bunch of prisoners. So the highly educated people knew the earth was round, but nobody ever set sail to that side. But the prisoners that were his crew people thought it was flat, so they was kind of hesitant. Okay, it says here, everybody thinks that Columbus was likely the first European to ever cross the Atlantic Ocean, but we have seen over a period of time that the North Viking Ericsson, who is believed to have landed in the present day of Newfoundland around 1000 AD, almost five centuries before Columbus set sail, there was a Viking that found the new world. But the thing is this, I don't think there was ever documented that he found it. He just found it, okay? As opposed to Columbus that he documented everything in his journal. So with that being said, it is giving the props to Columbus that he found it because it was documented. Remember, anything that you guys do, you have to document it for saying that you did it first or else somebody else could take the thing. All right, okay, for nearly a decade, Christopher Columbus was trying to find somebody that could sponsor him for his voyage, okay? He went to three different countries and they all refused to sponsor Mr. Columbus. He went to Portugal, they said no. They, he went to England, they said absolutely not. And he even went to France and he says, uh-uh, not us. We're not going to sponsor you. The response was all the same. No, 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 no. Every place that he went to get a sponsorship. The experts told Columbus that his calculations were wrong. They said, look, by the way you're calculating, yeah, you're definitely going to, no. We're not going to waste our money on that. But the boys took much longer than he thought. When he finally went to Spain and asked to, if he could get a sponsor for him, Isabella, King Ferdinand's wife, said, what do we got to lose? We got three old chips that we're trying to get rid of anyway. Why don't you give it to him? And if he, uh, if he sails off the earth, then you know, who was going to destroy the ships anyway because they were too old? But if he finds what he's looking for, we are the ones that the world will know that we are the ones that sponsored him. So they took a chance and they gave Christopher Columbus three ships plus around 50 to 100 crewmen, people that worked the ship, but they were all prisoners. Okay. We all know the three ships, right? The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. But those really weren't their names. No, they weren't. Those were their nicknames. In the 15th century Spain, ships were traditionally named after a saint. But people, like the crewmen, that did not like the names of the ships or had an issue with religious reasons, would give them a nickname just so they don't have to call it by the saint's name. So, 
the pizza, the Spanish, uh, the Span it was Spanish for the pizza one. Um, yes, the pizza was named after the pizza one. That's where they got his nickname. The Santa Clara, meanwhile, was nicknamed the Nina in honor of the owner of Juanito. Juanito owned this ship, which was called the Santa Clara, but the crewmen decided to name it Nina. And last but not least, the Santa Maria was always called the Santa Maria. Yes, it was always called the Santa Maria, and that was the biggest one. All right, the Santa Maria was wrecked on Columbus' historical voyage. On Christmas Eve, they was trying to head to the New World, but what happened? Big wreck happened. Um, the Santa Maria went over a coral reef in the northern coast of Dominican Republic. And with, when he went over the coral reef, he made a big, huge hole in the Santa Maria. So what happened? On that Christmas Eve, all the crew members had a slave over saving the cargo that Columbus has brought to the new land. And he sailed back on the Nina. But he had to leave nearly 40 members, crew members, back at the newfound land because there was no space for them. When he returned in a year later, in 1493, another crew was found alive. Okay. Christopher Columbus made four voyages to the New World. Yes, he did. We always hear about the first voyage, but after that, he came back three more times. Yes, he did. Although best known for the historic 1492 expedition, Columbus returned to the Americas three more times in the following decade. His voyage took him to the Caribbean islands, South America, and Central America. So every time that he went back to the newfound land, he continued to travel and found the Caribbean. He found South America and Central America. Well, Central before South, right? Right. Okay. Columbus returned to Spain in chains in 1500. So, the proud explorer went back to Spain in chains. Let's see why. It says here, Columbus was the governor of Hispaniola, but he was very brutal. And triadical. Native islanders who didn't collect enough gold could have their hands cut off. Mm. And rebel Spanish colonists was executed at the gallows. Colonists complained to their monarchy about his mismanagement. And the royal commissioner dispatched to Hispaniola, arrested Columbus in August 1500 and brought him back in Spain in chains. Although Columbus was stripped from being governor, King Ferdinand not only granted the explorer his freedom, but subsidized a fourth voyage. So, although he was able to keep his life, he was no longer a governor. So, I think it would be best for him not to go and travel to see Hispaniola because he would have no more power amongst the peoples. Ugh, yikes. All right. This guy, sometimes he did not look for the well-being of the people. He was more of his self-interest. A lunar eclipse may have saved Columbus. Yes, we, some of us might have heard this story. Some of us might have not. In February 1504, a desperate Columbus was stranded in Jamaica, abandoned by half his crew and denied food by the islanders. Mm. The heavens that he relied on for navigation, however, will guide him safely once again. Knowing from his almanac that a lunar eclipse was coming on February 29, 1504. Columbus warned the islanders that his God was upset with their refusal of food and that the moon would rise in flames mm. with the wrath of his God. 
On the appointed night, he eclipsed dark in the moon and turned it red. And it terrified Adonis offered provisions and besieged Columbus to ask his God for mercy. So, he definitely studied the stars way before he got into the ship. And he knew that a solar eclipse was coming. He used that to his advantage to tell the Adonis that wasn't so keen on reading the stars that he made a little lie saying that this moon would turn red in flames. And that actually saved his life. So, he definitely got out of that one safely. All right. Even in death, Columbus continues to cross the Atlantic. After he died, they did not know where to put him. Where to put his um, coffin. So, here's a little story here. Following his death in 1506, Columbus was buried in Spain. Then he was moved to Seville as a request of his daughter-in-law. The body of Columbus and his son Diego were shipped across the Atlantic to Santo Domingo and interred in the Santo Domingo Cathedral. When the French captured the island in 1795, the Spanish dug up the remains, thought to be those of the explorer, and moved them to Cuba before returning them to Seville after the Spanish-American War in 1898. However, a box with human remains and the explorer's names was discovered inside the Santo Domingo's Cathedral in 1877. Hmm. Did the Spaniards exhumed the wrong body? DNA testing in 2006 found evidence that at least some of the remains in the Seville are those of Columbus. The Dominican Republic had refused to let the other remains be tested. It could be possibility that pieces of Columbus were both in the New World and the Old World. Hmm. So, parts of his body is in DR? And other parts of his body is in the old world. We will never know what parts are his and what parts are somebody else. They don't want to test it. And it even gets stickier. The heirs of Columbus and the Spanish monarchy were in litigation until 1790. The death of Columbus his heirs waged a lengthy legal battle with the Spanish crown, claiming that the monarchy shortchanged them on money and profits due to the explorer. Most of the Colombian lawsuits were settled in 1536, but the legal proceeding nearly dragged on until 300, the 300th anniversary of Columbus' famous voyage. So there you have it, guys. Our guy, Mr. Christopher Columbus, which was an Italian man that went to Spain to get his ships, found the new world, and documented that he found it. There's a lot of controversy over this man, but it's up to you to decide whether he was a hero or a villain. With that being said, guys, I hope you guys have a safe Columbus Day, and I'll see you guys soon. Remember to wear your mask, stay six feet apart, and wash your hands regularly. Take care, everybody.